Well, hi. Um, I'm a teacher, which means I spend lots of time thinking about students, thinking about schools, and thinking about learning. It also means that I spend a lot of time asking questions. And I have one here for you today. But first, if you could just close your eyes. Okay? Close your eyes. I'm going to ask you to picture something for this question. I'm going to ask you to think back to high school. Okay. Here's the question. What are the first words that come to mind when you think back to high school? It's a bit of a rhetorical question right now here, but it wasn't when I asked my colleagues and recent high school graduates the very same question. Here's what they said. Um. Now, I have to admit, I was shocked when I saw this. I did not expect so much overlap between what students and my, teacher, my teaching colleagues were saying. Generations apart, years apart. Think about how much has changed in the last 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, yet this is what we're saying. I believe we're in the middle of a technological innovation that's changing society at such rapid rates. Schools are changing too, just not nearly as fast. It's this gap, this so-called digital gap, that I think can be problematic. But as a teacher, I find opportunity in that. Alex was a student in my biology class. And they were working on a project that was uh, to uh, answer a question, how can you transmit information selectively? Now, this is special because Alex was absent this particular day. She was home sick. Students were working on their projects. Her team was over in the corner just uh, working away. And I was walking around doing my teacher thing. And I walked over to where Alex's chair was, and it was empty, but it was talking. I turned around, and said, what's going on over there? And I looked, they had an iPhone propped up. And she was at home, sick, yes, which means she really liked the project, FaceTiming in. I wanted to make a huge deal of this. I was so excited by what they were doing, but I looked at my students, and it was no big deal to them. They were just working together. So I had to overcome my, my, my natural inclination to walk over there and say, that's awesome. That's a great use of technology. <laughs> Check. <laughs> right? But I had to decide to walk away and leave them alone. But I did a little this as I was kind of walking away. It was so cool. But it really, that with those other results really made me start to kind of question, how are we serving our students in our school buildings? See, I communicated in high school. Right? I wrote notes. Little pieces of paper, folding them up, and I was really good at passing them down the line to my friends. I could even kind of throw them if I had to. Well, students communicate differently. <laughs> they communicate with each other at the speed of light. They can send text, video, links, audio, boom, hit a button, speed of light, gone. Milliseconds, somewhere else. In the world, there's no send button on this. And no matter how hard I throw it, it's not going anywhere in the world. It's not going nearly the speed of light. Times have changed. You know that. You're here. Now, it's possible that at some point in your school career, you learned about light. And it's very possible that this is what your teacher said to you. And you wrote it down, and you promised you'd process it later. And your teacher re-explained it, gave you a few examples. Maybe even used an image like this. What if, what if you just gave this image at the beginning without any explanation? And you did what I call an any question session, where students just free flow their questions. There's one rule for an any question session, no answers. You don't stop the flow of questioning. I can guarantee you that the questions the students will ask will eclipse that last slide of all that text. Now, that's not new. Okay? We've been doing this for years in the classroom. But here is what is new. What are you going to do with all those questions? I'm not going to stand in front of the class and just answer them. Students now have so much information at their fingertips. Let them access that information. Does that mean I'm going to have some areas in my classroom of students answering different questions? Yes. Do I care? No. It's about light. So they're going to investigate. They're going to look into. They're going to create. Then they're going to share. 
their results to each other. It's an amazing dynamic environment and my role fundamentally changes. I'm no longer just telling and explaining. I get to walk around. I get to learn with my students. I get to help them with their queries. I get to answer a lot of their questions with questions. It's amazing. Anybody know what that is? What's that symbol? Share, right? It's the share icon. Phones and tablets, almost all new apps, have this button. Anything you want, anything you think is important, you hit that button, it's gone. Again, boom, speed of light, somewhere else in this world. Someone's receiving that. This is the culture. These are the times that our students are growing up in. My students want to contribute. Not just something they give me or my school. They want to contribute globally. And they can. I just need to get out of their way. Every school has bright spots of excellence, whether they're students or classrooms. But what we have to contribute to is getting them to share their ideas. Hopefully, in a culture of questioning, this is what we move towards. In this environment, it's about what if, not about what now. Right? This environment is all about sharing ideas and brilliance. See, we have AP and we have IB, but what we really need is student R&D. Our students need to research, develop, and share their ideas. They can. Now, when you develop a culture of questioning like this, you move away from a culture of compliance. Less institutional, and there are some consequences. You start to see things differently. The bells go off, they get louder and louder. The announcements, louder and more disruptive. And you start to question things. Here are some things that I kind of questioned. One, the schedule. School schedule. Do we have to have first period that goes to second period and after a set of time go to a third period? All at the same, does this make sense? That was one of the consequences I began to think about. The second one was how do we give feedback? How do I give feedback to my students and to my parents? Can we do better than a letter and maybe a number. The third thing I began to question was a sense of community. What is community in a school? A lot of my, lot of my colleagues, a lot of friends think it's, colleague, it's outside the school. Community is outside the building. But what about community inside the building? Is my classroom a community? Is the senior class a community? And how do students feel about that? Do they see themselves inside that community as central, all vital, important members of that community, or do they see themselves outside, detached from that. And the last thing I began, began to question was technology. Technology is everywhere and it has to be. It has to be ubiquitous in a school. So you start to think that way and start questioning. There's some consequences there, but what can you do about it? Well, it seems clear that we can't tweak. We have to do differently. We have to design from the ground up differently because when you tweak things, you add more to the plate without taking things off. Students' backpacks get heavier and heavier, so to speak. Students' schedules, or uh, teacher schedules, get crazier and crazier. Administrators manage more, lead less. This is an unsustainable, unhealthy environment. So we need redesign. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's go back to the schedule. I decided to investigate a little bit on my own the schedule. I went back to school. I said, I'm going to shadow my students, not to evaluate instruction, but just to be a student again and see what it feels like. I went to first period. It was a nice introduction, great open of the lesson, being told what to do the whole time. Bell went off. I was, I'm amazed by bells. Bells go off and we just get up and move. I asked my students, can you read time? Yes, right? But then we rely on the bells. The so bell goes off, everybody's in the hallway, it's like this big herd walking through. I am amazed by my students' ability to walk, <laughs> talk, and text at the same time without running into too many walls. <laughs> Next class, it was a tornado. That that, the entire day just went on and on and on. This is what I looked like at the end of the day. <laughs> I had no idea what hit me. 
It was so fast. And just when I'd start to get into something, boom, a bell would go off. And students would start to move to the next class, and I would do, and I would drool. I mean, the whole, just, it was not a pretty sight. I felt like I had to go home and do my homework, you guys, not to practice and learn more, but just to remember what we did that day. So scheduling. Can we do better? Yes. <laughs> Why do we have those periods? Open up the morning. Give that time for students to work. To, to, to communicate with their teachers. Teachers, let's go to them. Students, work on projects, driving questions that we help you build, that when you answer those driving questions, it's multidisciplinary. You discover content rather than cover content. We can do this. Students are remarkably intense when they sink their teeth into something. Let's create that type of environment. The second thing was feedback. We must do better than spreadsheets that simply give letters and numbers at the end. Because when you start really working closely with students in this type of an environment, it seems a little trite at the end of a period of time to say, OK, here's your letter and number, and have a nice day. Move on. When you get that close, we have to leverage new platforms of information systems that use social media type ideas where we can actually communicate with one another, talk back and forth, not just between me and my student, but parents, other teachers, leaders, administrators, all in that system. In this environment, we need to bring new words into the vernacular. We need to start talking about playing. We need to start talking about exploring, inspiring, creating, sharing, Inventing, patents. These are words that need to be part of this culture and what we're doing, and we can do this. Well, our theme is talk is cheap, make it happen. Where is this happening? I am so proud to say that I'm working with a group of educators that is making this image right here a reality, that is taking students and placing them purposely at the center of community, teachers, parents, and family, Leadership. This, uh, this movement is called the Mosaic Collective at my school. And it places student interest and passion at the heart of everything we do. It's starting pretty soon. And parents are enrolling their students. Students are enrolling themselves into this. It's awesome. Student focused. Elimination of a bell schedule. Mastery-based curriculum, individualized curriculum. I embrace my new role as a teacher. Definitely a paradigm shift happening within, within a public school building. I started with a question, and I end with a question for you. Here it is. What are you going to do to help modernize learning in your community? Think about it and then do it. Thank you.